Hi everybody, in the previous video we've discussed um, caching of relations and caching of relations scope. Now I'd like to talk about the table exists that we can see many times when we are looking at the profiler. Let's set the scene first of all, let's go ahead and comment out these two lines or remove these two lines that we have set earlier. And let's imagine that the child task is not called 10 times, it's called 100 times. Okay, and let's run it. One thing that is very clear in the profiler is that for every time we've called the uh, inner class or the, the child class, we've got the table exists over here. Now what is it? Where did it come from? What does it do? This is very common in applications that were migrated from pervasive to SQL. Well, by definition, you know, B3 pervasive used to check if the table exists whenever it was accessing for the first time, and if it was not there, it would create it. Okay? And this leg was called in magic check existence, I think, and in .NET we call it auto-create. And if we go in debugging into our code, let's put a breakpoint here and run the code again. We can look at the tables we're looking at, for example, shippers, and see that its auto-create table flag is set to true. When this flag is set to true, it will, whenever it will start a controller using this entity, it will check if the table exists, and if it doesn't exist, it will create it. Now, if you have a subtext that is called many times, this is wasteful. Okay, this is just doing the same select statement again and again and again and again, and to prevent it, there are several ways to deal with it. First and easiest one is, say, auto-create table equals to false. I can set it specifically in this controller, like this, auto auto create table equals false. And just by making that change, one line of code, in this controller, we can see that the shippers table does not have the check existence, check table existence entry in the performance log. Now, you can control it in a specific controller, just like we've done over here, just by setting the flag over here, or we can control it for the entire application by going to the tables definition in the models namespace, choose shippers, and here set the auto-create tables to false. You can do the same to any property of an entity, like cache or everything else. But in this case, I'm going to set auto-create table here as false. So whenever I'm using this table, you will no longer see that auto-create table. Now, my recommendation is set it to false. 99% of your tables already exist. There's no point in checking for them. Even if you want to create a table, Take advantage of the fact that in .NET you can set auto create table true in a specific controller to only in that controller create a table and not everywhere else. Keep it true for temporary tables that exist very shortly and you want them to still be created. And if it won't be true for tables that do not exist, you will get a database error saying table of view does not exist. And so we've seen here how we can set it using the auto create table. Now I want to touch another side of the event. Let's return it back to true, or remove it in, in tables that was migrated from pervasive, it's by default true. So, so you can see here that we have that setting, table exists, was called 100 times. By the way, if you're curious, just open it and see the SQL. It does a select object ID to make sure that that table exists. Now, there's another way of reducing it that is similar to the way that we've used for caching. By defining that entity in the parent controller, Okay, over here, saying entities add new models shippers, the table exists check will only happen in that parent controller. We can see here that in my demo cache controller, shippers happened once and table exists was called once, and in the specific child controller, it wasn't called at all. Okay, so that's another way of controlling the table exists. Now, my recommendation for tables that exist, <laughs> set the check table exists to false, it's useless. And even for tables that you want to create, just set it to true in the specific controller you want to create it in, and in all other cases, ignore it. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to talk about locking, and after that, we're going to talk about main table caching. Cheers!